Very good morning, ninth class. Today we will cover second part of DG for your geography book, chapter number three, drainage. ठीक है? अभी तक जो है हम origin drainage system India का total पढ़ चुके हैं, Himalayan rivers को पढ़ चुके हैं, Panel Sugar River को पढ़ चुके हैं, आज हम lakes के बारे में पढ़ेंगे. Look at this picture. What would you like to do if you were in this place? When in a lake, most of us love to go boating, canoe, fishing, swimming, and so on. Lakes are also a great treat for nature lovers. Apart from providing so much fun, what do you think the other purposes of a lake could be? Discuss in groups and come up with your thoughts. Click continue to proceed. Lakes are of great value to human beings. Lakes help in regulating the flow of a river. During heavy rainfall, lakes prevent flooding of rivers. Lakes can also be used to generate hydro power. They moderate the climate of the surroundings. Lakes also provide the habitat for various aquatic plants and animals and few species of birds. Lakes also help to develop tourism. Most lakes are perennial, that is, they contain water throughout the year. Some perennial lakes in India are the Bhimtal Lake in Uttarakhand, the Mansval Lake in Kashmir, and the Vembanar Lake in Kerala. Most of the lakes around the world are perennial. Seasonal lakes are those lakes that contain water only during the rainy season, like the lakes in the basins of semi-arid regions. The Hedbal Lake in Karnataka, the Surval Lake in Rajasthan, and the Nal Sarovar Lake in Gujarat are some of the seasonal lakes in India. The Miro Lake in the United States of America, Lake Toba in Indonesia, and Lake Gore in Australia are some examples of seasonal lakes in other parts of the world. Lakes that originate from melted glaciers are called glacial lakes. In most cases, freshwater lakes are of glacial origin. The Dal Lake, the Bhimtal Lake, the Nainital Lake, the Luptak Lake, and the Barapani Lake are some important freshwater lakes in India. Did you know that Lake Baikal of Russia is the world's largest freshwater lake and contains about 20% of the world's fresh water? Lake Tanganyika of Africa is the second largest freshwater lake in the world. A few freshwater lakes also originate from tectonic activity, such as the Wulad Lake in Kashmir. Saltwater lakes are formed in areas where the water evaporates rapidly and the waterbed contains a high concentration of salt content. Did you know that the Sunad Lake in Rajasthan is India's largest saltwater lake? Lake Magenta in Australia 
and Lake Urmia in Iran are some of the famous saltwater lakes of the world. Oxbow lakes are formed when a wide meander from a stream or a river gets cut off to form a lake. Urbas Tavir is an Oxbow lake formed by the river Ganga in West Bengal. Lagoons are formed when a body of water gets separated from the sea by a sand bank or a similar feature. The Chilikan Lake, the Pulikat Lake and the Kolleru Lake are the famous lagoons in India. The Glen Rock Lagoon is a famous picturesque lagoon in Australia. So far, we learned about various types of natural lakes. Do you know that lakes can be man-made too? The damming of rivers for the generation of hydropower can also lead to the formation of lakes. The Kurugoban Sagar Lake was formed when the Bakranangal Dam was built. Nowadays, artificial lakes are also created for recreational purposes. Let's now recall what we have learned about lakes. Fill in the missing information in each question. Click the show answer button to view the correct Do you realize what has happened to this river? Careless human activities have resulted in polluting a beautiful river, thus making it unfit for use. In the past, people settled near rivers and other such water bodies due to their multiple benefits. These settlements later developed into big cities. We use rivers for domestic purposes. Irrigation. Fishing. Navigation. Hydropower generation. Recreation and so on. Apart from these, did you know that we use rivers for waste disposal too.
industrial liquid waste or effluents, agricultural waste, and rubbish, such as plastic bags and cans, are the major causes of river pollution. About 75% of river pollution is caused by municipal sewage, while industrial pollution contributes to 25% of the pollution. Rivers have self-cleansing capabilities. However, the proportion of the pollutants that we dump into rivers is a lot higher than the amount that rivers can cleanse on their own. Due to this, rivers fail to cleanse their waters to the extent required. Polluted rivers become unfit for use. Did you know that Asian rivers are the most polluted in the world? Aquatic organisms cannot thrive in polluted rivers. Did you know that just one liter of insecticide killed over 1,000 fish in the river Glavon in Norfolk, USA? Using polluted water for domestic purposes may cause waterborne infectious diseases like typhoid and cholera. There is growing concern about river pollution around the world. England's first Water Pollution Act of 1388 declared it illegal to dump animal remains, dung or garbage into rivers. The 1972 Clean Water Act released by the US government regulates the release of pollutants into US waterways. In Scotland, river purification boards control river pollution. We learnt about the measures taken by various countries to control river pollution. In India, what measures are we taking to control river pollution? Action Plan, or GAP. Municipal sewage from 29 Class 1 cities, 23 Class 2 cities, and about 48 towns. Effluents from industries and polluting wastes from various other sources are discharged into the Ganga, resulting in its pollution. The Ganga Action Plan was launched in 1985 with an objective of cleansing the Ganga. In 1993, the plan was modified to include its tributaries in the cleansing process. In 1995, the Ganga Action Plan was renamed as the National River Conservation Plan, or NRCP, to include all the polluted rivers of the country in the plan. The tasks for tackling pollution included the creation of facilities such as sewage treatment plants, industrial effluent treatment plants or ETPs, public laboratories, electric crematoria, and so on. The NRCP still has a long way to go 
with our complete cooperation, it will soon achieve success. Liver pollution. can be reduced by preventing agricultural wastes and industrial discharges from entering rivers without proper treatment. River pollution can also be reduced by controlling shipping discharges and marine operations. Avoid throwing litter in rivers. Throw them in dustbins instead. Spreading the word about how we can reduce river pollution will also be of great help. Imagine that your class has adopted a nearby river. All the students in the class are now responsible to save this river from pollution. Which of the following activities will you allow, and which of these will you not allow, to keep the river pollution-free? Thank you. 